What if there was a place with all the zip of new Coca-Cola? Welcome ladies and gentlemen to Nuka World Fallout 4's last DLC. This video is going to be a kind of triple guide. First of all, how to find the 10 hidden cappies within the Nuka World Park. Secondly, how to get the unique Nuka World jumpsuit. And finally, how to get the unique Nuka Nuke launcher modification for the Fat Man. Along with the recipe to make the ammunition, the Nuka Nuke. And of course, to do any of the stuff in this video, you will need the Nuka World DLC installed. And I do apologize if I sound fine. Funny, I'm a bit sick. I suppose you could say I have a Nuka colder. So when we enter the Nuka town for the first time, we will find the Enigma from the Twitch stream. Yes, it's her boys, Sierra Petrovita. On the world map, she can be found in Nuka town, USA, just to the south of Fistop Grill. And on the local map, her position looks like this. So once we find Sierra, one of our favorite characters from Fallout 3, we of course want to talk to her. And when the options do come up, you of course want to say that you will help her. And that she she can trust you. Haha, <laughs> it's funny because we both know that's a lie. But after we convince her that we are friendly and we're trustworthy, she will reveal to us her secret mission to find the 10 hidden cappies within the Nuka World Park. And this will give us the quest, Cappy in a Haystack. Now she will also give us her Cappy glasses, which we must be wearing to properly see and interact with the hidden cappies within the park. And they also look amazing. If you don't have the glasses on and you find a hidden Cappy, this is what it will look like and you will not be able to interact with it, therefore not being able to progress with the quest. So be sure to put the glasses on. Now our first hidden cappy can be found inside Nukatown USA as well, just to the southwest of Fizztop Grill. On the local map, its position looks like this, right where my character is currently standing. Tucked away in between these two buildings on the wall, of course, we will find the first cappy symbol. Now make sure that you click on it when you find it. This will log it in the quest as found. Next we need to head to Galactic World. And this one can be found just to the southwest of Starport Nuka. On the local map, its position looks like this. Of course, found where my character is standing. So once we get here, we want to go behind this set of stairs on the left. Once under it, we will find the S Cappy symbol on the wall here. And again, be sure to click on it to log it in the quest. The next one on the world map can be found between Robco Battle Zone and Galactic Zone. And on the local map, its position is right here. Once we get here, before heading into the space walk, turn to the left and next to the bins, we will find the next Cappy symbol. As always, be sure to click on it. For the next two we need to head to Safari Zone. And this fourth hidden cappy can be found right at the Safari Adventure Primate House. On the local map, its position is right here, tucked away in the hedges. But once we get here, the hidden cappy is actually behind the statue of their king, Harambe. And here it is, tucked away in the bushes. As always, be sure to activate the old N cap. Next, the fifth cappy can be found inside the maze. On the world map, it is found right between these three map markers. And on the local map, its position position is right where my character is standing up against the wall. Be sure to click on it to activate it. For 6 and 7 we will have to come to Kitty Kingdom. And for number 6 specifically on the world map we will have to come just to the southeast of the Kitty Kingdom map marker. And on the local map we need to specifically come right where my character is currently located. Here we will find this big tower and on the top floor of this tower up against the wall is the eye cappy symbol. Click on it to log it. For cappy number 7 we will need to come to the Fun House. Again, it is located within Kitty Kingdom, but it has its own map marker, so it is quite easy to find. Now, this is a very, very long experience, but at one point, we will get to the swirling green room with doors from the trailer. This is the room we need to be in to find Cappy number seven. Once in the swirling room, we need to head into the smaller room, the same one in which my character's currently standing. This is the room that has the Cappy in it. And hidden behind the red door is, of course, the Cappy F. Click on it to log it for the quest. For Cappy number eight, we need to come to the world of refreshment. Again, it has its own map marker. Once we get here, we need to head into the Nuka Quantum River Tunnel. Once in here, up against one of the wooden structures will be the Cappy R. As always, click on it to activate the little bugger. And on the local map, Cappy R can be found where my character is currently standing 
up against the western edge of the Nuka Quantum River. For 9 and 10, we need to come to Dry Rock Gulch. And for number 9, we need to come to the southwest of Doc Phosphate's Saloon. Here, we will find a graveyard. And on the back side of this gravestone is the E Nuka Cappy dude. As always, click on it to activate it and log it in for the quest. And in case you can't find it on the local map, it can be found exactly where my character's standing. Now, the final Cappy is a little bit of a pain in the ass to get, but the quickest way to get it is to find Sheriff Eagle. He can be found right here on the world map as soon as you walk through the gates to Dry Rock Gulch. Once we find him, you need to speak to him and agree to become the new deputy to clear out Mad Mulligan's Mine. Or as he says it, Mad Mulligan's Mine. Now the thing is, the last Cappy is found within Mad Mulligan's mine, and the Sheriff has the key to the mine, but the key to the mine is locked in the Sheriff's safe, which he has forgotten the code to. But there are three other robots, One-Eyed Ike, Doc Phosphate, and the Giddy Up Kid, who each have one third of the code to the safe. Agreeing will give you the quest High Noon at the Gulch. So to get all three parts of the combination to the safe to get the key to open Mulligan's mine to find the last hidden Cappy, we have to do these menial tasks for the three other robots. However, there is a very hard speech check in which you can skip each of the tasks and get straight down to business. These three robots are marked with quest markers as well, so you will have no problem finding them. But once you get all three pieces of the combination to the safe, you can go and unlock the safe again. It is marked with a quest marker. Grab the key to Mad Mulligan's Mine. And then we need to head over to Mad Mulligan's Mine, which on the world map is marked with its own map marker, so it is no problem to find. Again, it's in Dry Rock Gulch. So once inside, we'll find a room with the waterfalls and the river in the little shack. Up on the wall of the shack is the H cap. And in case you do struggle at all, it is found right where my character is currently standing on the local map. This is of course once we are inside the mine. So once we get all 10, we need to head back to Sierra Petrovita. We'll give her all 10 Cappy letters. She will tell us that it spells out refreshment. And then we have to walk over to this keypad and click the numbers which represent the letters for refreshment. That's what it says you have to do. All you really have to do is just click activate. Now once we're inside Brad Burton's office, we want to head up to the top floor and over to this Nuka Cola vending machine. Behind it is a secret button. Click it to activate. As you turn around, you will see the bookshelf has shifted, and there is actually an elevator that leads downwards to a subterranean lair. Once we get down here, we're gonna find some pretty interesting stuff. If you don't want some crazy shit spoiled, start watching right now. But once we're down here, run all the way through until you find what we need to find. A head in a jar. So we'll give you the gut of what's going on. This head in a jar is a guy named John Caleb Brad Burton. He is the man who created Nuka Cola in the pre-war fallout, of course. He was searching for immortality and I suppose in a roundabout way got it by becoming a head in a frozen jar. Not quite what he was looking for. Now because he's been in a head in a jar for 200 odd years, he wants to die immediately. And for him to die, you need to make the choice to turn off the power. Turning off the power will kill him, but it will do something else. It will open an otherwise inaccessible vault door. Within this vault door is the Nuka Nuke launcher modification for the Fat Man, the recipe for Nuka Cola, and also the schematics for creating the Nuka Nuke ammunition for the Nuka Nuke launcher modification for the Fat Man. But on the other side of the penny, Sierra Petrovita has been idolizing this man her whole life, and she does not want you to kill him. So if you choose not to kill him, she will reward you with a limited edition super rare, I'm assuming in game an actual unique piece of clothing or apparel, the Nuka World jumpsuit. So that's the situation you are left in, you can get one or the other. Also just quickly, if you try and pickpocket Sierra Petrovita, the Nuka World jumpsuit will not be in her inventory, so the only way to get it is to appease her during the quest. Now there is actually a way to get both. First of all, you have to accept Sierra's offer, and agree not to kill Brad Burton. After all, she has spent her whole life idolizing him. So once you complete the quest by doing that, you'll get the Nuka World jumpsuit. What you can then do is just run over and shut down the power, which will open the vault and kill Brad Burton anyway. But we already have the jumpsuit, and now the vault's open. Happy days. The one downside is that this blonde cutie will turn hostile, in which case we have to shoot her in the face. But hey, now we can go inside the vault, get the Nuka Nuke schematics. Just make note of what it says here. You can now build Nuka Nuke modifications. That's not true. You can build Nuka Nuke ammunition, but the Nuka Nuke launcher modification 
location for the Fat Man is unique and cannot be crafted. On the table, we'll also find some Nuke and Nuke ammunition. And if we turn to the left on the shelf, we will find the Nuke and Nuke launcher, a Fat Man with the unique, uncraftable Nuke and Nuke launcher modification. So be sure to grab that Fat Man. Now, as always, before looking at any of this new stuff, I have reduced all of my character's special attribute stats to one. I also have no bobblehead poke or magazine effects applied to my character. What this means is we will be seeing the absolute minimum base stats of the weapon. And well, first of all, we're going to be looking at the jumpsuit, so that too, I suppose. The Nuka World jumpsuit has a damage resistance of two and a radiation resistance of five. It has no unique effects. All it has is a unique skin. So if you are going to choose one or the other, I would not choose this personally. From the back, it looks like this. It almost looks a bit more orange than red, but hey, I suppose all the reds in full art are actually quite orange. And from the front, it looks like this, with of course the cappy glasses still on. Why? Because fashion. So now when we head to a chemistry station, we will find the Nuka Nuke ammunition as a craftable option. When we get here, as we can see on the right, to make it, you need one mini nuke and one Nuka Cola Quantum. And in my opinion, and I am sure soon to be your opinion, it is well worth the sacrifice. Now, as we can see here, the Nuka Nuke launcher is a modification that can be taken off the Fat Man that it's put on. As we can see, it is here in my inventory, the Fat Man Nuka Nuke Launcher mod. Now I'm gonna drop it on the ground so it is not in my inventory. Then when we head back to the weapons workbench, as you can see, I cannot craft a Nuka Nuka Launcher modification. So this means that yes, it is a unique modification that you can only get one of. So as we can see here, the standard launcher does 535 damage and the Nuka Nuke Launcher does 794. That's a 33% increase in damage already. So let's take a look at the Nuka Nuke Launcher modification for the Fat Man. It has a base ballistic damage of 794, which is of course explosive damage too. Its ammunition is the Nuka Nuke. It has a fire rate of one, its range is 117, its accuracy is 63, its weight is 36, and its value is 650 caps. And up the top, Nuka Nuke Launcher. There's no special effects that this brings, except of course that it can now use the Nuka Nuke as ammunition, which as we saw earlier, does an extra 33% damage on top of the original Fat Man. So while we're on the topic, let's talk about the damage. So what we saw before were the base damages. The standard Fat Man had 535 base damage, and the Nuka Nuke Launcher had a base damage of 794. Again, this does 33% more damage. And already, just the base damages, that's a big difference. But once you start getting perked up, the difference is over a thousand damage, which is insanity. Now this thing's damage is increased by both the Demolition Experts perk and the Heavy Gunner perk. So its damage just keeps going up and up and up. Throw in some other stuff like the Bloody Mess perk and the Lone Wanderer perk, and you got some serious damage on your hands. After doing all this, I ended up with a damage of 3,933. You get some bobbleheads and some magazines, you could easily get this over 4,000 damage. Not something you want dropped on you. Now already, just just on the face of it, that is pretty freaking nuts. You are pretty much guaranteed to wipe out anything you hit with this. But because the Nuka Nuke Launcher is a modification, it can be applied to any Fat Man of your choice. So what you can do is go and find your favorite legendary Fat Man. Stick this on it and you will have a lot of fun and experimentation to do. One that is springing to mind is the unique Fat Man named Big Boy. A guide to that can be found in the description, but what this is, it is a two-shot Fat Man, so it shoots two two bullets at the expense of one ammunition. So if we apply the Nuka Nuke launcher to say the big boy, we're gonna be shooting two warheads that are gonna be doing about 4,000 damage each. Again, at the expense of only one ammunition. So essentially, theoretically, and quite simply, we're gonna be hitting whatever we hit for 8,000 damage. Of course, not taking into consideration nuke spread or enemy damage resistance or anything like that. But even if you are just shooting a tank, it's gonna have 8,000 damage to deal with. So if it wasn't a one-shot solution beforehand, well now I suppose it's a half a shot solution because it's twice as good, but overall at the end of the day whatever a fat man can do, the Nuka Nuke Launcher can do it 33% better. And although it's not a weapon for everyday use, if you ever do need something to die straight away, or in a very, very dramatic manner, the Nuka Nuke Launcher is an excellent candidate. It will explosively launch you into your demolition career, and it will always quench all of your bloodthirst. It's one hell of a quantum weapon. And here it is, the Nuka Nuke Launcher in action.
there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. I've been Camel, and this has been my walkthrough guide for the unique Fat Man modification, the Nuka Nuke Launcher. Also, how to get the unique Nuka World jumpsuit, and how to find the 10 hidden cappies within Nuka World Park. So I do hope that this video helped you in some way. I'm sure it has. And it does make me very happy to know that. So if it did help you out, I think you will be very interested in clicking on the playlist button on screen. This, of course, will take you directly to my Fallout 4 Guides playlist, where you can select the videos you wish to watch freely, or you can check in the description where it's will be frequently updated with links to new Fallout 4 guides that I upload. If you enjoy Nuking Innocence, please feel free to follow me on Twitter, the link can also be found in the description, or you can search Camelworks on Twitter. And with all that said, I would like to thank you very much for watching, it has been an absolute pleasure having you here with me, and I will see you very shortly in the next video. I'll see you there in a second.